Not so long ago, scientists saw no difference between the fish caught in the ocean and the fish that have been domestically bred. Later, research proved the quality of the artificially bred fish to be much worse. It lacks some important amino acids and compounds. Lately, information has been publicized that artificially bred fish are downright harmful for health. It's even not about how these fish are being fed or what enhancers they mix in to make the fish grow faster and look spiffy. Facts like that. The attractive red color of Norwegian salmon is induced by special additives which can cause loss of eyesight. Such facts are no longer surprising to anyone. This is physical poison. Informational poison is much more perilous. The program of self-destruction that has accumulated in the fish which are not allowed to fight for survival, this program shall inevitably be transmitted to people eating such fish and affect their descendants too. Suddenly I understand why I stopped liking chicken meat. Generations after generations of industrially bred chickens deprived of sunlight and movement and only feeding and feeding We'll have the self-destruction program growing stronger with each new generation. We are responsible for those whom we deprave. Our senseless attitude to wild life and nature shall boomerang on our descendants as low immunity and new diseases. In a flash of memory, a conversation comes back to me with my pal living in Ukraine. He told me a curious story. In 1932, in Ukraine, people perished from famine by the village. His father was a little boy then. At one time he cried and said that they were all going to die most likely, and his granny began soothing him. Don't worry, my little lad, you're going to make it through. Yes, we are all in a plight now, but in a time away from here, all people will feel much worse. Almost all of them will be gravely ill, so ill that life will be unbearable to them. Trust me, laddie, in that time life will be much worse than now, and a lot more folk will die. And when will that time come? the grandson inquired. Not too soon, the grandmother replied. Iron airplanes will carry much folk then, and the whole sky will be crisscrossed with wires so that people could communicate with each other. My friend smiled. I could not figure out for long what that meant. The whole sky will be crisscrossed with wires. It just recently dawned on me mobile phone technology. Grandma was a common cottager, a village dweller, and so she interpreted in her own way the information that had been transmitted to her through a subtle plane. So our time is short, as it seems. I shrugged, taking into account the facts about food having become virtually inedible after the past 10 years, it's no wonder that health problems are due. Recently, I have read an article about a discovery made by the scientists of one of Moscow's suburban institutes. They have found a way to produce babies' dry milk mixtures from the milk of genetically modified mice. It is purported as a 100% analog of mother's milk. The article says that the Russian scientists are convinced in their experiment being highly progressive because such an effective technology of substituting babies' food is to be found nowhere else in the world. <laughs> Shortly after that, I read another article. 
describing an experiment over rats. Newborn ratlings were fed with milk, which caused them nothing but insouciance, vigor, and quick growth. Then the milk was replaced with a synthetic mixture comprising a set of ingredients fully identical to those of real milk, including enzymes. But that mixture was not a processed natural substance. It was an artificial, synthesized product. The outcome of the change was that the rats started pining away and dying, one after another. A conclusion was arrived at. The scientists left out only one ingredient while creating the synthetic mixture. It was an element which all living matter includes. It was the invisible field structure, known as biofield, aura, or soul. The higher a living being stand in its, stands in its development, the more important will be for it such concepts as soul, or feelings, or subtle energy. For redlings, the priority was the natural origin of the milk. For a human cub, not only the energetics of a product matters, but also its informational value. Nothing is more vital for a baby child than its mother's milk, which transmits onto it the crucial information on the physical level, thus helping it to intensely evolve in its soul. Artificial synthetic mixtures may inhibit the development of the invisible structures that are related to man's higher energetics. It is hard to imagine what information a child will receive from the milk of genetically modified mice. But I know one thing. If a human soul stops functioning, then the mind and the body inevitably degrade by degrees. And, interestingly, this holds good not only with humans, it turns out that the intellectual level of talking parrots corresponds to a three-year-old baby's mind. The parrots get offended if not talked with and if they do not experience communication. They do not want to degrade. What is more, when left in solitude without intellectual intercourse that is vital for soul, they can lose their mind and die. And all that despite the fact that their body is quite fine and their mind also. If birds can suffer such disorders, then it is true, and much more so, of humans whose souls abandon the healthy way of existing. Could that be the reason for so many newborns with mental problems today? The cause, which is the crime against the soul, may not be obvious to the layman. It is the consequences that we always see, namely autistic children and schizophrenic children and mentally challenged children and those with serious hereditary diseases. We think that some malfunction of the genetic structure is to blame and we try to improve the diagnostic equipment so that would allow us to discover the disease of the child while it is still in its mother's womb so that we could destroy the child with perfect timing. We do not want to understand that it is no other reason that our decaying souls refusing love and virtue that sooner or later issues in gravest physical illnesses. Not only aggressive emotions, but also poisoned food and unhealthy lifestyle are harmful for soul. They ruin the subtle energy which is necessary for strategic survival. If a monotheist reverts to paganism, 
and stops observing the commandments that mirror the laws of the universe, he not only will lose his mind, but will have misfortunes and illnesses raining on him. The Torah has had this information for several thousands of years. But often we have to violate the laws of the universe to verify their truthfulness. Earth has not known such an extensive violation as the one that is taking place now. It is likely that humankind must actually find itself poised on the brink of destruction in order to be able to move on to a new level of existence. The most important thing here is to realize it before it's too late, to start changing before the point of no return has been passed. I keep driving and my thoughts keep revolving around the subject of nutrition. The experiment of McCarrison, known to science as the Canoor experiment, brilliantly shows the connection between body and soul. This experiment was carried out over rats. The first batch of animals was fed with foods usual for Londoners and Europeans in general. Those included white bread, meat, salt, tinned goods, eggs, preserves, and other sweets, boiled vegetables, and so on. The second batch was fed after the pattern of India dwellers and Eastern people in general. The third batch was fed after the manner of a mountain tribe named Hunza. Average life expectancy in this tribe is 120 years. The tribe dwells in the north of India, in Kashmir, in an outlying Himalayan valley. The people of this tribe are strangers to the concept of disease. The outcome was that the first batch of rats was prone to the same diseases that Londoners are typically ailed with, from child diseases to chronic illnesses of senescence. The Whitechapel batch had become aggressive started biting one another, even to death. The health and behavior of the Indian batch was akin to that of the Hindu and Eastern people in general. And the Hunza batch were never ill, showed health and vigor, spent their time in games and quiet rest. The last mentioned batch of rats fed on fresh fruit, vegetables, berries, green stuffs, nuts, and edible roots. How is this food different from typical European food? The quantity of food turned out to be irrelevant, and so did its diversity, calorie content, and microelemental content. Interestingly, it is all these factors that Western doctors and nutritionists count as crucial. Vitamins, amino acids, microelements, all these things are top of the list nowadays. But, as the experiment showed, the energy and information of the foods turned out to be of real importance. This is related not to physical body directly, but to its field structure. A low level of subtle energy in the food makes it harmful for health. Building on this premise, we will have it that marinated food and tinned food and frozen food is more of a harm to organism than otherwise. But tragically, such types of food are mostly produced by transnational corporations. It is the long terms of possible storage that make the profits high. And the sad reality is that such long storage destroys the subtle energetics of a food product and the preservatives, flavor enhancers, colorings, and artificial flavorings ruin its informational unity. Man has two energetic contours. The external and the weak one is called the physical body. 
The basic and the most important one is called the human feelings, the soul of man. Soul can be damaged if one renounces love and loses one's unity with God. Soul can be harmed by food with distorted information and minimal subtle energy. Modern food, such as McDonald's fast foods, has maximal calorie content and minimal subtle energy content. It was perfectly logical when one healthy German turned into an impotent man suffering from diabetes with a few more chronic diseases thrown on top of that. It took him only three months of regular attendance of the above-mentioned establishment to degrade. The most astonishing thing is that he had had himself examined before starting this new nutrition period and the doctors admitted that he was perfectly healthy. What is even more astonishing is that after the mentioned experiment, absolutely nothing changed in the world. The empire of harmful, low-quality food still prospers. For corporations, money has no history. It has been earned. It is all there is to know, by any means, in any ways. Such an overwhelming priority of money murders moral consciousness and life itself. The superficial logic, I carry on thinking, will have it that the situation is quite complicated in Russia now. It has been admitted that the most cruel television as a whole is Russian television. It is probably the most immoral too. Although nothing in the world can consist only of minuses, there are pluses everywhere as well. The degradation in Russia, when it tried to imitate Western lifestyle, has been so rapid and overwhelming that many have sensed immediate danger. Many wish now to search for ways to salvation. The disaster of the materialistic way the way of treating daily bread and a place to live as the highest priority. The disaster of such a choice is evident in Russia more than anywhere else, and one can sense it.